Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Jesse, and then in today's tutorial, I'll be showing you how to save a machine learning model in Julia. So first of all, it's just like pickle, whereby you want to write your model on in the by stream, right? So first of all, let's we need these packages. So pkg.rgld, that is what it's going to be using, which we'll be using to do the pickling, and then pkg.add, which this is dependent upon this. And then pkg.add pi call gld. So the pi call gld is to help us because we'll be using sk import, right? Which is from scikit-learn. Okay, so first of all, let's load our packages. So using data frames, then I'll, I'll reload our machine learning packages. So using scikit-learn, then fit, we'll be calling the fit bank and then the fit transform bank. This fit bank and then fit transform is from the scikit-learn, not from the data frames, right? That's why it is close here. Then at sk import which is the sk import macro to be able to import the scikit learn packages or the models so let's see perfect now let's move on to some of the things we can also do so let's load our data set so this is going to be our data set so we're using the iris data, data, data set which is a very common data set and then so it has already loaded for us perfectly we can also check for the head, the first 10, and then we realize that it's having five columns one, two, three, four, right? And then fifth, so four features, and then one target outcome, right? So after that, we can check for the side, we can check for the presence of missing values, but this is usually this is from UCI, so it is actually clean, so there's no missing values, and then on the data types, the element types are all fruits, which is quite easy to work with, and then the species outcome is strength. So let's check for the size. The size is 150 over 5, which is quite it's not that bad. And then first of all, so let's try and create our features. To create our features, we will just need to do convert, and we are going to create convert them into arrays so that it's easier for us. So df then one to four, Julia start from one index, not zero index. So it's going to be one to four. So we are taking column one to column four as our features, right? And we are converting them to arrays. Perfect. It is an array of float 64 because my PC is 64. You check for the type, it's array float 64, two dimensional array. And then you're going to be checking for the doing the same thing for our target outcome. So when you do it, you're converting the feed column into an array, which is going to be our outcome. Perfect. So let's see some of the things. If you check for the type of it, it's going to work for us as a string. Now let's try and build our model. So first of all, using logistic regressions, you can use any classification model that you want. So we have linear model, so SK import linear model, right? And then logistic regression. So that importing it, it's going to work. I think it's supposed to update itself. Perfect. Now we'll try and then split our data sets that we have. So I'm using SK import model selection. And then train test split to be able to split our data set so that we're able to run it, run it well. So we're using this formula here, this function, this statement here to be able to do the train test split. We'll be splitting on the features and then the outcome with 0 0.2 and a random set of 42, right? So perfect, that's done it well. Now let's do the final things and check for the size of each of them. So when you check with the size of our S train and our right train, 124 and then 120, which is perfect. 120 is out. The total time is 150, so it is well because we did 0 0.2. Now let's fit our model to build a relation between them. And then in doing that, we are going to get the using logistic regression which we copy. And then we are fitting it with on our on our model. We're using our logistic regression model to fit the SY. S train and then the Y train. So let's check for the accuracy of the model you have created. So when you check for the accuracy of our model, it was 1.0, which is super, super, super <laughs> perfect. I don't think I suspect this anyway, but it's okay. We are using that as an example. So now, if you want to see this something a perfect model like this, if you want to see this perfect accurate model of 1.0 that is 100% accurate. I'll be showing you how to do that. So today I just go with using GLD. This is 
the package and then pick up a file called GLD to help us with the because you have been using the SK input, which is very very important. Otherwise, to give you to be giving you error. Now, after doing that, it has compiled. Now, to save it, we just go with this format. So it's going to be save. Then logistic model, right? So that is the name. You can name it as anyhow you want it to be, but the extension should be GLD. And then, so we are storing this model which we had here, right? The model that we had here, which gave us this accuracy of 1.0. We are storing it inside this file with the name this model. That is the main idea about it. Or oh, that is the first method. So I can omit this and it's still going to work, or I can just bring it and it will still work. This is one of the methods of doing it. The next method is to use this format. So either I use the, this format here or I use this format. It's still the same thing. So at macro, then the name of the model, that is the file that you want to save it onto, and then the model itself. So right. So we are saving this model onto this. That is one of the methods of doing it. The next method is that we can also use the this method of the open and the writing, which is quite like this. Oops, okay. No way. So in this case, I'm using GLD open, then logit model that's the name of the model file that you want to save. Then we are opening the write mode, and then we are writing our model with a tag name or variable name onto this file. Right, so this is this thing is the same as this thing we have done here. So you can use any of them, it's going to work perfectly. So now let's see the next thing that you can do. So in case you have loaded your model, you have saved your model, you want to use it another time in your server or any work project you want to do, you can just do it this format of so let's say new model, then gld.load, or you can be without this, it's still going to work. And then we are we are going to use the name that we stored it, right? We stored it at logit model. And then we remember that we saw it as model, so you should make sure that when you are doing it here, it becomes consistent, right? When you are doing it in this format here, right? It becomes consistent so that in case you forget, you still remember how the name was. Okay, so after that, after loading it. We have we are going to be storing it inside this right so this thing can be done in this format which is just using them as macro format so at load then the name of the model and then model right so it's going to work just like the previous one there so after that you see that it's loading it perfectly like the previous one that is one of the ways of doing it so either you can just do it this format using the jld dot load into brackets or you can just use the at macro or you can use this format also it's going to be like this but you store it inside a variable and then it's going to be like this right which is going to also work for us perfectly perfect so you can just open it with the read mode then you read the file right to so read this model so when you read it you can still apply so let's try it and apply that model that we have loaded to see and check for accuracy so we're using the same thing remember that we named it as new model so if i name it as i put this here new model i'm just test, testing my model on this y state and y test realize that it's going to give me 1.0 just like the previous one so thank you for watching if you have any questions or contributions you can just put inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit please don't forget to subscribe stay blessed